Welcome to the Swinton Estate and happy Christmas. The Swinton Estate is a 20,000 acre estate in the beautiful Yorkshire Dales. We have a hotel, a spa, a cookery school, bird of prey centre, glamping campsite and many, many activities for those who love the great outdoors. Over the last three years, we've supported the Archbishop of York's Youth Trust in all the invaluable work that they do in schools and local communities with children. Normally, I'd be inviting you to join us at our annual candlelit concert, which we hold at the hotel in support of the Trust. This year, it's not meant to be. So we have an online candlelit concert, which I'm very, very pleased to be able to introduce you to. It's really important to the Trust that you support them as much as you can, and I hope you do, and I also hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felicity. Felicity is the proprietor here at the beautiful Swinton Park Estate. And we have been so encouraged and blessed by them over a number of years in a partnership in running this event together. So we're incredibly grateful to them. My name is Dan Finn and I'm the Chief Executive of the Youth Trust. And we exist to empower children and young people to transform society through giving them opportunities to grow in their leadership, their faith, and their character, working in partnership with schools, churches, and communities. Shortly, you'll hear from the Archbishop of York, who's gonna share some words. We'll hear from young people as well, and we're also gonna have wonderful carols sung for you by the fantastic Yorkshire Voices Choir. Everything today has been filmed with social distancing in mind, and closely following the government guidance at the time. So sit back, relax as we bring carols by candlelight into your living room. Sing up and enjoy as we go to our first carol brought to us by the Yorkshire Voices. Once in Cheers. 
at the Youth Trust, we are passionate about empowering young people to transform society. As a charity, we partner with schools and churches and communities to provide opportunities for young people to grow in their leadership, their faith and their character. And we do this through our Young Leaders Awards. They run for primary schools and secondary schools and are available from Key Stage 1 right up to Post 16. But we also run a number of activities that help young people to develop in their faith, from producing resources to running pilgrimages and so much more. Right now, we've got some amazing young leaders working across the country to serve others this Christmas time. And we would love your support as we seek to help them today. If you can, please do visit our website that's on the screen now before you and make a donation to the work that we are doing with thousands of children and young people across this country. Thank you so much for your support. So my name is Nusrat Chowdhury and I'm an, a house leader and a humanities teacher at the St Lawrence Academy in Scunthorpe. The award has been running for two years now um, with our Year 9 students as part of their wider enrichment programmes. So the Community Cafe has been running for about four years. It's a termly hub that focuses on bringing the local community and the academy community together. So we've had people from the local care home, which is across the road from us. We've had um, local authority representatives, charities, parents, students come up as well. And we've got our community PCOs that attend regularly as well. Obviously we realised with, with COVID and the implications that it wasn't going to work having the um, community cafe in the academy. Um, so I'd noticed that a lot of things were going virtual. We were having a lot of virtual meetings. So I, I sat down and thought, well, maybe we, we could go virtual with this. So in my next session with the students, we thought we had a discussion about how we could go virtual and the idea of, of doing a virtual newsletter um, came up as an idea. We looked at the previous community cafe and looked at the kind of things we did and thought, well, how can we move it forward? So for example, obviously a community cafe, we normally do a lovely afternoon tea. Obviously we couldn't do that. So one of the students recommended that we could maybe put a recipe. So she likes cooking at home, baking at home. So she put her own personal recipe in there. Um, we had ideas with students saying, well, we, instead of doing the quiz that we normally do um, in, the, in the atrium, we could do an online quiz where, where people could fill it in themselves and we just put the answer at the bottom. So the students actually were really proud of them. They were really creative, really thinking outside the box. They chose the, the font before they went. They chose, told me what font they wanted, what colours they wanted. They directed the whole thing. And the feedback that we got was, was, was phenomenal from, from the local communities. I was able to share emails from the local care home, which said that they'd printed them out and handed them out to residents. We've got our trustees and governors, each one who'd read through the newsletter and they're saying they're, they're eager to see the next one coming up as well. So yeah, it was lovely. I enjoyed uh, how we all worked together with the current uh, world affairs and uh... By working as a team and sharing each other idea, we made a um, great sport uh, sharing by sharing our ideas. I felt proud and kind of happy that I was able to be part of this, especially since it's my first time doing it. And to be able to work together to get something nice for the community. I think it's shown them that anything is possible, really, and I think it's shown me that as well as a teacher that. Um, I think it was beyond any of our expectations. As a result, we've got a new project we're working on um, that's working on with our local um, hospital, the neonatal intensive care. We're making some care packages and the students are making posters. We've emailed supermarkets. And so it's showing them actually we can do this. And the brainstorming session that we've had recently for this new project, they've been thinking about the community, uh, the virtual newsletter that we've done. I think, well, Miss, we did this then. Can we do this now? And can we contact this person? Now we're going to go to our reading, which is shared with us by some fantastic young leaders from the St John's Academy in Brighouse. This reading is taken from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. 
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So many years ago, when I was a parish priest, uh, it was in a very small church, modern building, built in the 50s, 60s, and on a normal Sunday, the church was quite big enough, but at Christmas, uh, we absolutely packed everybody in. We obviously wouldn't be allowed to do that this Christmas. Um, almost standing room only. And as a result, the only place where we could put our crib was actually underneath the altar itself at the front of the church. And we had these beautiful, you know, large crib figures. Um, so on this particular Christmas morning, uh, everyone came to church, we were packed in, we were singing our carols, doing our Christmas stuff, uh, and there, under the altar, was the Christmas scene. Well, about halfway through the service, a little toddler, Miriam her name was, I guess she was maybe two years old, she toddled up to the front of the church and stood in front of the crib, and for a minute or two just kind of gazed in wonder at Mary and Joseph and Jesus and the, you know, all, 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 the, all the usual uh, figures. And then, very, very carefully, um, so as not to disturb anybody, so as not to wake the baby, Miriam stepped inside and she sat down. And there she stayed for the rest of the service. So that when the congregation came up to receive communion on Christmas morning on that Christmas day, and when they beheld the crib, they saw Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the angels and the baby Jesus and the ox and the ass and Miriam. Miriam was there, part of the story. And I've always carried that picture with me of Miriam climbing inside the crib as an image of the real invitation of the Christmas story, which is for us to get inside it, not just to look at it, not just to read about it, not just to sing our carols, but to enter into the story. Because when we enter into the story, that's when, as it were, the story enters into us. The story of a very young woman becoming the mother of the Lord. The story of quite an old man, Joseph, believing in the dream that he had to put his trust in Mary. The story of some strange wise men from the East following a star, uh, the story of a motley wild band of shepherds being sung to by angels. They responded, they got inside the story and the story changed them and through them the whole world was changed. Our world is dark and difficult at the moment. Christmas isn't going to be easy for us this year. So my invitation is a simple one. Um, 
bend beneath the lintel of the door of the stable at Bethlehem and climb inside this story and you will have your life changed. And like the shepherds, you'll find out about peace. Like the wise men, you'll find new direction of your life. Like Mary, Jesus can be born in you and you too can be empowered to change our world and to bring our very needy and sorrowful world the hope and peace and joy of Christmas. Twenty twenty has been a really difficult time for all of us. We've all faced lots of difficult challenges, difficult circumstances, and it looks like the winter is going to continue to be really hard as well. But throughout this season, there have been some incredible people who have stepped up, served us, served our communities and made a real difference. Be that frontline NHS workers, the police, community support services, teachers, and so many more. These are the real heroes of 2020. These are the people that we want to say a huge thank you to. But there's more than that too. It's not just these incredible professionals and these amazing people. It's also been children and young people. We have worked with some amazing young people throughout this year who have stepped up throughout a lockdown, who have put their leadership into action and have made a real difference in their communities, bringing kindness, hospitality and service to some of the most vulnerable in society. So we say thank you to the children and young people who have been heroes of 2020 as well. Over the past couple of months, I've been writing some cards to elderly people in our community who have been lonely during lockdown. The idea came from thinking about our own great-grandmother and how she was lonely in a flat. So we decided that we'd write a couple of cards to her and she told us how much it had brightened up her day. So we thought we'd write some to other elderly people in our community too. Through our church, we managed to get in touch with a large number of elderly people who were really, really excited by the idea. I've now written more than 20 cards and have even received some back. If you take 20 minutes out of your day to be kind, it can really help someone else. As lockdown started, I sang a song for my nan, Annie's song by John Denver. It's one of her favourite songs. And I chose to sing the song because she was getting really lonely in lockdown. I turned up with my speaker system and I sang the song to her because she loves it when I sing to her. Like the mountains in springtime, like a walk in the rain. People started coming out and then I sort of realised there's more to this. It's not just about me singing to my nan, it's about everyone coming together and enjoying themselves in lockdown. So yeah, that's what I learned from singing to my nine in the street, to spread kindness and uh, the importance of community spirit. During this lockdown, I have been a maths tutor for my younger siblings and my younger cousins. 
because the schools are closed whenever they're doing the maths homework and they need a little bit of help or assistance I go in and help them. During lockdown I've felt happiest where I've been baking with my family. I enjoy baking because it's a way for me to bond with my family. I sent over a few recipes and photos of the food and cakes our dad baked and made to my school and they were very thankful. They sent them over to the NHS and I got um, quite a few postcards and let, like letters back to say how thankful they were. I showed my kindness because at lunch someone I knew hadn't eaten the entire day and was very hungry and hadn't didn't have anything in their school account. So I decided to buy her something to eat. I had enough money to share for the both of us. And also I knew that being hungry on a school day can be so tiring. Being kind can come in many different ways and it doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be huge. It can even be, even the littlest things can just improve someone's day. So that is kindness. What inspiring stories from these young people. But these are only just a few of the thousands of stories of hope that we hear from young people we are working with across the whole country. To date, we've worked with over 100,000 children and young people to help them grow in their leadership, faith and character. We're always so inspired by the stories of the ways that children and young people are serving their community through kindness and social action, transforming the areas where they live. Throughout this year, our young people have helped those in isolation, have reached out to the vulnerable, have taught younger brothers and sisters, and have reached out to bring comfort and joy at this difficult time. And we know that many more schools would like to get involved in this work, would like to take part in the Young Leaders Award. So if you can help us today, we would be most grateful. Please go to our website uh, that's on the screen now and make a donation as we seek to serve more schools and more young people to help them reach out and make a difference in the areas where they live. Thank you for joining us for our virtual carols by candlelight. I really hope that it's got you into the Christmas mood as we begin this Advent season. We've got one final carol together, but before we do that, let's pray together. May the joy of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child be yours. Be yours this Christmas. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly, all things heavenly, and fill you with joy and peace. Amen. God rest you merry gentlemen, there's nothing you